Death Row with Death Row TV, and I'm back again with another review. And this week we're going to be doing episode 4 of Jekyll. But before I get started on this review, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell so you can see episodes 5 and 6 that will be coming out after this. Now let's get started on episode 4 of Jekyll. As you can see here, the, the episode kind of starts off in a little bit of a flashback to when Tom met Claire. And what it is, is a friend of Claire's and a friend of Tom's, you know, husband and wife, decide to just kind of have them meet up at a dinner at their house. And that's kind of what happens. Is, you know, Tom kind of comes off as a little bit boring and... The way his uh, the way he does his face like this is like he, it's almost like a constipation phase right here. <laughs> kind of funny, but eh. anyway, they don't really hit it off at first. You know, it wasn't a love at first sight type of thing, anyway. But uh, you know, he's kind of got he's kind of got this boring attitude about him. He's just asking him about things that are in the yard. You know, I, I didn't notice that about your patio. I'm just admiring your patio. And he's like, well, whatever. And, of course, Claire, you know, makes a joke about, you know, what she does for a living. Because he goes, hey, what do you do for, you know? And she's like, I only do, uh, <laughs> I only do over 100000 <laughs> And she's like, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. And uh, he kind of like, huh. And then while they're at the dinner table... His kind of his mood kind of changes when they're at the dinner table. He he's not wearing his shoes at the dinner table either, which for some reason he doesn't like to wear his shoes while he's eating. It doesn't really explain that whole ordeal, but that's just what's happening. But anyway, as they're talking, and she says something about you know the men's that she's dated, and she's like, "Well," and he goes like, "Well, I'm over two fifty, <laughs> two, and he's talking about two hundred fifty k." And she kind of laughs at him, and, uh, and he and she starts to like him at that point. And that look on his face—if you look on his face right here—let's see if I can capture it. She, catch it right in here somewhere anyways yeah if you look at his face right here it's almost like he's halfway between Hyde and halfway between Tom whereas before it was full on Tom you know that little you know puppy look dog looking face now as he's talking to her and starting to get really into Claire this face changes a little bit you, you see it right here and it's like what the hell's going on because at this point He's like messing with her and she messes with him back and she like hides his shoes is what he, she does. And uh, so now he's got this look on her face. It's like, now I know she's interested. And he's got the he's like, oh boy, face. It's like, did you hide them? <laughs> and at that point, they kind of leave the little dinner party and catch a taxi and because they're both been drinking. And they end up back at her place. And she's like, yeah, we barely spoke. We've just been, you know, kind of going at it all night or whatever. And he's looking at the mirror while she's in, you know, they're at her place. And, you know, he, he, spots, the, he spots the man's uh, pajama shirt on the back of the door. And she's like... That's that's that was there in case things go bad. Basically, she's like, you know, it's not really some. She's not really married or anything like that. Anyway, he comes back into the uh, the the bedroom, and he's like, "Old boyfriend." And she's like, "He is now." <laughs> and of course, they go back at it again. And then, of course, timeline moves a little bit. Oh, they have their baby. And, it's, of course, you know, they have the twins. And they're all surprised about having twins. And he's like, but we had scans and everything. And, and they, well, they, for some reason, they didn't catch it. 
and we cut back to the present. And of course, if you remember from the last episode, at the very end of the last episode, they captured him and put him in like this little containment unit that kind of looks like a coffin of sorts. And they're pulling that thing out of the dang truck at the institution here. And the, the life sign monitor that's on this little thing is going all kinds of nuts. And, and the, the tech guy here, the tall guy right here, is basically saying he's kind of having a panic attack is what's happening. But they have to keep him in there or the, otherwise he'll turn in the hide and they can't do what they need to do with him. And Mr. Syme here, he's just trying to play good guy, bad guy somehow. He's kind of acting like he's in the middle. He's still acting like he's Tom's friend and everything, and you're not really sure what's going on. And for some odd reason, he keeps apologizing for the damn coffee at the institution when he's talking to Claire. And he keeps offering her coffee the, the entire time, too. Yeah, he, this is where the tech guy is telling Claire he's kind of having a... Having a Pan attack, sort of. <laughs> like, really, sort of. And we cut back to the past again, you know, flashback. And we cut to when this is after, you know, the kids have been born and everything, and Tom comes back to work. Or he's been working for a little while. And for some reason, his thumb, his, his thumbprint has changed somehow, and the scanner to get into the building is not recognizing. And it's kind of it's kind of what this little uh, hides, you know, making his appearance, so to speak. And it's changing little things on his body right now. Not everything, but he's trying to make his hides trying to make his way out, basically. And of course, they put him in a room with you know the security guard puts him in a room, thinking like you know you need to talk to the the head honcho, which is Mister Sign for this this building or whatever. And as they're leaving the building, they cut to the screen and they show you the two different thumbprints. They similar, but not identical. And that's why the whole thing just went haywire. You know, thumbprint is the same and somehow his, you know, he had he kept, he's kind of sitting there looking at his thumb like, what the hell is going on? Because he doesn't know what, he has no clue what's going on. And uh, so now we're back to the present again. Let's see. Yeah. And Mr. Syme is trying to explain, you know, this is where he thought he worked, and now we're going to we're going to go and get on this elevator and go down to the area where we're we're doing the real stuff, and that was the real stuff is the stuff about him. The whole institution was put together to follow and analyze and you know whatever for him. He's not actually there working per se. Anyway, one of the ladies that works underneath him. This is another flashback here. And there's another uh, instance of the psyche leaking, uh, Hyde's psyche leaking through. And somehow he ends up writing the notes. And the uh, person that works under him got the notes. And she's like, I'm leaving and I'm not putting any notice in. And I think I, I think I should sue you guys for, I think I should sue you for what you wrote to me. And she's like, what are you talking about? And she hands him the notes. And he's like, I didn't write this. He's like, she's like, it's your handwriting. He's like, it is my handwriting, but I didn't write this. And he's like, he doesn't understand what's going on. It's basically, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And she's taking it as a perverted message, you know. And so that's when Tom seeks out his friend, the doctor, which is the one that hooked him up with Claire. He's like, something's going on with me. I need to, you know... I'm, I'm hearing things and, you know, I had like this hair on my arm that just came out of nowhere. And the doctor's like, yeah, that didn't happen. You know, basically the doctor's kind of like console him and gaslight him at the same time. And, uh, yeah, they, he, so the doctor just says, Hey, you need to go on, you need to go take a holiday or whatever. Take your wife on a vacation. 
And then we cut back to the present again, and it's Mr. Syme has got a phone call, and it's the detectives on the other end that Claire had originally hired. And they're trying to get into the building, and they're trying to convince Mr. Sign to let them in, because they have information. Well, Mr. Sign tries to brush them off, and as he's brushing them off, they decide to call all the ladies in the office in that building, in the institute, that Mr. Syme has slept with, and that's the reason they all have their, well, why they all have their numbers, because they have Mr. Syme's information somehow and all his phone numbers that's connected through his cell phone. My guess is they probably picked it up from the uh, investigation at the house. And anyway, he finally decides, okay, we'll let you in. I don't want to hear what you have to actually say. And she, she says something to the effect is like, I, I want to speak to the real actual Winston Churchill. And he's like, okay, we'll let you in. Shit. I mean, you know, that type deal. Then we cut back to the flashback again. And then you see Claire just on a pier on the, you know, near a beach area where they're taking a vacation. It's, it's just her and Tom and the kids were left with the friend, the doctor friend and his wife so they could have some time alone. And as she's talking to her friend and Tom's getting some ice cream, a group of thugs come up and start harassing her. Now he comes up and says like, no, I'm, I'm her husband. You need to leave get on somewhere. And he knows he's outnumbered and everything. And there's no point in trying to fight him. And like, uh, he kind of just, he doesn't really let them. He's like, you know, but they still go on to harass, but they don't take any further. They don't beat them up or anything like that. They just basically harass and then leave. It seems like a group of people that just like to mess with tourists all the time, you know? Anyway, that night when they're at the restaurant, he just keeps staring at this window because he's pissed off. He wants to do something about it, and he's he, he, this anger is built up inside of him because he... He feels like he should have done something in the moment there, and he didn't. And Claire has no qualms over it. She's like, you know, whatever. You know, let's sit down and have our wine. And then, you know, for some reason, he orders three wines and not two. And she's like, you're, you're expecting somebody else? And he's like, no. And has the, the waiter take it back. And as he's paying for it, he gives the waiter the card, and he goes back to the window. And she goes to see about finding him a table to eat at. Well, he's looking out the window again. He's getting, the anger has boiled to a point. See, so here's the waiter coming to get his car. Uh, he's signing for the drinks. The waiter turns around to head back. And the waiter, it doesn't really show you what the waiter's looking at because the waiter's looking, and, and also, the, if you notice, there's a little flickering lights that are going on there. Again, hides coming out. And this is, and this episode is pretty much setting up the narrative that the whole reason that Hyde was able to penetrate and come out at an earlier age than what the original Jekyll and Hyde did is because of Tom's love and care for Claire and his kids and the anger he felt that he couldn't do anything when something happened to him. You know, the harassment would happen to Claire more specifically. Uh... And so the way the waiter right here turns around and see that Tom's gone and the window's open. He just jumped out the damn window and he's headed down to the beach because he knows they're down there around this bonfire that they built in like a little barrel. Anyway, the, the, the main, the main, you know, asshole basically that was messing with his wife goes, you know, separates himself from the, the group of people that are at the fire to go take a piss somewhere. And that's where, and this is the first time Mr. Hyde shows up. <laughs> and of course, Claire and the, uh, I guess it's the uh, bed and breakfast owner, head back up to the room and they're trying to find Tom. They can't find him anywhere. And the, the guy, that he's like, I told you, he went out the window. The window was open, you know, and she, Claire's not like really buying it. She's like, I don't know what's going on. And then we cut back to what, uh, yeah. 
He's, and Hyde is just basically talking to this guy. This is the first time that Hyde is out. And he's basically saying, it's funny. He's like, I have nothing against you, but I have this burning rage that I just want to hurt you. I don't know why. I don't even know you. <laughs> but I want, I just know that I have to hurt you. And it's basically, it's it's the psyche of Tom is leaking in through to Hyde. And he feels that rage. I mean, the look on his face right here. And then uh, it'll be all over in a minute. Yeah. There you go. I always try to catch these little spots right here with the teeth and the eyes. Man, it is nuts, nutty looking. So yeah. Anyway, he's he he get pretty much Hyde is getting revenge on the person that harassed Claire. It's not so much that they well what they did to Tom. I think Tom was okay with him putting ice cream on their forehead and messing with him. It's the fact that they messed with Claire. It brought Mr. Hideout. Mr. Hideout. Uh, that's kind of funny. Anyway, so now, as you can see here, they see their friend off in the distance and they and like. Basically, Hyde is like dancing over his ass, like I'll just beat the shit out of you, now. and he chomps his ear off, is what he does. And you find out, yeah, I, I probably gave it, I shouldn't have said that. I gave it some of it away. Anyway, we cut back to the present. Mister Sign meets up with the two detectives, and Catherine is with them. Catherine being the one that was working with Tom in order to keep uh, Mister Hyde in check. So Mr. Syme comes in, he introduces Claire to the rest of them, and uh, basically the detective is there trying to tell them everything, that the information that she's gathered and what she thinks is going on. And what it boils down to is, since they don't, they don't think, you know, they don't think Tom was born, they think he was made. And they used... Uh, DNA from the original Jekyll and Hyde to create Tom in, at this institution. And one of the owners of this institution is uh, uh, is a character and I don't know if I shoot, I don't even know if uh, The character is played by Linda Marlowe. And the character she's playing is Miss Utterson. And Utterson and some and another, I can't remember the name, but Utterson and the partner own the institution, which is why the institution is so big. They've owned it all, all these hundreds of years. It's been passed down in the family. And they pretty much have the body of Jekyll and Hyde, the original Jekyll and Hyde, and of course they had the DNA and the detective surmises that they used that DNA to clone Mr. Tom, uh, Dr. Tom Jackson. And of course, Mr. Simon is like, you're so close, but you're not there. And she's like, and towards the end of it, you know, Mr. Syme, let's see. Yeah. You see, you see towards the end of it, the detectives trying to, you know, give him all this information like, Hey, I got you. You know, I figured it out. And Mr. Syme, you, you'll see in the later here, he's like, you're close, but you ain't quite there, but you're not leaving here. And he's basically holding them hostage here. Anyway, we finally get to see Miss Utterson, which is this older lady right here with the blonde hair. <laughs> And that is one of the owners. She's the top of the top of the food chain at this institution. Then we cut back to the uh, you know the the beach vacation, and Tom wakes up on the beach, 
not remembering anything that happened, really. And he's got blood all over his shirt, blood all over his face, and he looks down at the sand, and it says, I'm coming back. So now he knows something's up. And all the stuff that's been happening to him is starting to make sense, or not really make sense. He knows something's really wrong with him. And so he goes to the hospital thinking he, you know, he's going to be sick or whatever. And when he gets to the hospital, he phones Claire at that uh, bed and breakfast that they were staying at, you know, letting her know where he is. And he says, it's weird, Claire. I get here to the hospital and I don't feel bad. I feel incredible, actually. I don't even need my glasses. My eyes work fine again. And Claire's like, none of this makes sense. And he's telling her, like, look, I got 20-20 vision. It's like being a kid again. And Claire's not really making sense of this. And then, like, as he's talking on the phone with her, he, like, feels around in his jacket trying to find, like, a uh, his wallet or whatever. And he can't really, he doesn't find his wallet. What he ends up finding in his jacket pocket is a damn ear that Hyde chomped off of, uh, and he starts having the flash memories of what Hyde was doing with that uh, guy that was harassing him. And Hyde pretty much bit his entire ear off. And so <laughs> Tom Tom heads to the bathroom to try to get rid of it real quick. And he just, <laughs> he just like throws the ear in there. And he's trying to like flush it. And of course it doesn't flush. And he's like trying to use a little cleaning brush to make it go down. He's kind of freaking out here. He's like, he knows something is up. And as he's standing there, splashing his face with water, and he's looking in the uh, mirror, and it's almost like right here. I'll give it a second. I don't know why they do this. This right here. He's like, holy shit. Look the difference there. Okay, basically he's saying, like, what are you? Let's if I can catch it. I'm trying to catch it. Yeah, he sees it like blood red or whatever. He freaks out, looks up at the mirror, and he can see Tom, and Hyde can see him. And so, yeah, that's when he starts, he knows something's up, and that's when he decides to get that apartment that he turns into a, like, dungeon area to contain Hyde. Especially, he knows he's violent because of what he did to that guy and been biting his ear off and everything. Now, it doesn't really tell you if he killed him or not. Uh, I don't think he did. Like, he, like, like, you know, I, you don't know, honestly. And so, <clears throat> he starts off at this apartment just kind of like chaining him, chaining himself inside the apartment, hiding the key so that, uh, Mr. Hyde can't get out. And then sets up a camera and a TV the camera to record himself when he changes and the TV to watch the recording when he wakes up from the incident. And that's kind of what happens. And then he, as he's playing this recording back to him, Mr. Hyde is kind of like mocking him. I'm, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. We're back to present here. I'm my bad. Back to the present here, and of course, you know, the Texans are finishing up with all the theories and everything. And like I said, they're, they're saying he's a clone. Y'all created him at the institution. That's why you've been, you know, the, was invested in this for over 100 years. And Mr. Sign finally just says, uh, no, you think Tom Jackman's a clone? That's not correct. So you're there, but not quite there. And then, and then like, we're, we have a cure for him, and that's why he's in the uh, containment unit is so that we can cure him. And, uh, Mr. Syme is basically Claire, basically telling Claire at this point is like we've had, we've had the cure all this time, so it was just a matter of catching him or whatever to, to administer the cure. 
And Mr. Syme kind of mocks the detectives like, a shame, really. You almost had it. So you could have been working for me this whole time. And the detective says, well, if it isn't a clone, where does he come from? And then Mr. Syme finally chimes in at the end here. He's like, he's like, I really was hoping you were going to tell us where he comes from because we don't have the faintest idea. We just know what he is. And she's kind of shocked by that whole thing. And, she's, and even Claire's like, what the hell? Like, what is going on? Like, you know, and, and no, at no point in this theory do, do they mention the, the older lady that was claiming to be Tom's uh, mother. So she has to fit into the theory somewhere. And why the detectives didn't, like, try to tie that in, I'm not sure. But maybe it's explained in the in the last two episodes coming up. So yeah, now we're cutting back to the apartment, and Tom has woken up from a night of being high, chained into this room. And of course, he gets the tape and he starts playing it. And of course, Hyde is mocking him, calling him daddy, and all this other stuff, being weird as shit and creepy. And uh, basically, he comes up to the screen and starts talking into the camera. And he's like, hey, pick a number, any number. I can, I can tell you what it is. And he says something like 103. He's like, 103 on the video. You know, like, how did I do that kind of type of deal? And Tom is getting pissed off because and because and, Hyde is starting to scare him. But Tom is, it goes past the scare part and starts getting pissed off. And grabs the TV and just, like, kind of throws it down bust the TV then there's like a, a ring on the doorbell at the apartment and he answers it and it's a dude he, he's like I didn't order anything he's like well it's an emergency you had to have it right away or whatever and the guy you know he finally Tom opens the door and the guy is handing him a box with the new TV in it <laughs> and it's like holy crap but even it, it Hyde even knew he was going to, you know, throw the TV down in a fit. You know, it's kind of funny. And then that's the end of that whole ordeal. And then we cut back to Claire and Mr. Syme walking in on the containment unit that Mr. Jackman or Tom is in. And they're fixing to basically release him, let him out of the box. But he, with Mr. Syme is telling her, even though we gave him the cure... We don't know which one's going to come out of that uh, containment unit. It could be Tom Jackman comes out of there, and it could be that Hyde comes out of there. We don't know. They said the cure just stops the degeneration and stops the transformation back and forth, but it doesn't let you choose which part of that person stays behind in the, in the psyche. And so that's kind of, and it, and Mr. Simon explains that he, the reason we had to put him in that box is that's part of the uh, administering the cure is being in this box. Which I don't, I mean, it's not really explained exactly. I mean, other than the containment, you want to contain Hyde and you don't want him to escape. So, I mean, I, that'd be an obvious reason to put him in there. But then he says it's part of the actual solution and the cure to him as well. And Mr. Syme is trying to be, you know, nice, of course, and all this. Like, and Claire doesn't really understand. He's like, why are you doing this for him? You know, all this other stuff. He's like, well, he is my friend. It's like, you say that, but I don't believe it. Anyway. And, of course, like I said, throughout this whole episode, he keeps talking about, he keeps uh, offering coffee and then at the same time apologizing for how bad the coffee is. And of course, they ask her if she wants coffee. He asks her if she wants coffee again. And at first, she just kind of turns it down, and then, and then, you know, as soon as he says we're going to let him out of there, she's like, you know what? I think I will have that coffee now. And then she takes the coffee, and I'm, you know, the fits him. Yeah, Claire's even saying, you sound like you're a little bit proud of him. And he's like, well, yeah, he is my friend. Anyway, 
she finally says, okay, I'll take, you know, she says a little bit earlier, oh, yeah, I think I will take that coffee. And then that's when the, one of the other scientists brings the coffee to her or whatever, and she's like, thank you. And throws the coffee in his face because she doesn't believe a word he's saying. And she, <laughs> to get get back at the whole time apologizing for the coffee, she apologizes to Mr. Sign for throwing the coffee on him and uh, walks up to the tech guy and says, all right, let my husband out of there. And that kind of ends the episode of episode four of Jekyll, kind of setting it up for what is about to happen next. Is that going to be Hyde or is it going to be Dr. Tom Chapman that comes out of that containment unit. We won't know until episode five, of course. And that is me, and that is my review of this great movie. Check out my uh, score of this awesome show on Critic List. And if you want to watch this show, I think the only way to watch it streaming really is on Amazon. You have to buy it per episode or for the whole season. It's only six episodes, so it's not like super expensive. And to me, it would be worth it if you just want to watch it. Or, but the only thing is, this: the, it, if you want the physical copy of this uh, series, you have to do like I did and go to eBay or just find some, find one in a thrift store somewhere. But uh, I was able to find a, a clean copy on eBay because it currently is out of print. So you can either buy it on Amazon to watch or go on eBay and buy the DVD and never made it to Blu-ray because, like I said, this is 2007 when this came out. So that's my review, and that is me, Death Row, out. <laughs>